During the early 1960s, the US Army was looking to produce a new series of light tanks. Cadillac produced six chassis, which were designated the T-114s. Four of the six vehicles were armed with a single high caliber machine gun, and the two others were armed with the 106mm recoilless rifle. During testing, however, the latter two vehicles proved unsatisfactory. While in real life, the US Army wasn't happy with the more heavily armed T-114, in War Thunder, it is locked behind a high Golden Eagle price tag, so will you be happy with yours? Alright lads, today we're going to be taking a look at the weapons and performance of the T-114. Starting always with the basics, this vehicle is a rank 5 battery rating 6.7 tank destroyer located in the American tech tree. Being a rank 5 premium, it will be effective at grinding out vehicles between the ranks of 1 and 6. To unlock this tank, you'll have to purchase the vehicle in the American premium tree for the cost of 8,020 golden eagles. Being a premium, it naturally has a low crew train cost of 10,000 silver lions. To purchase the expert and ace qualifications for the tank, it will cost you 420,000 silver lions and 1,100 golden eagles respectively. Like the golden eagle cost, the T114 also has a very high repair cost of 7,000 silver lions, which is around twice as high as contemporary premiums. For example, the American T29 has a repair cost of just under 4,000 silver lions. Moving on to the rewards, and the vehicle has a base RP modifier of 1.9, which gives you an RP modifier of 380% with a free to play account and 570% with a premium account. Your silver line modifier, however, of 1.4 is the highest available in game, allowing you to make pretty good profits with the vehicle. You can expect a 280% silver line modifier with a free to play account and 420% with a premium account. In terms of customization, you have several camouflages available to purchase, including woodland, desert and winter camouflage schemes, as well as two camouflages available on the Gaijin Marketplace. At battery rating 6.7, the T114 enjoys a wide range of backup vehicles, such as the T34, T92, M56, as well as several premiums such as the T29 and M46 Tiger. Alright lads, just letting you know I now have a Twitter account, I'm using the handle Sarko Sniper. I have also created a second channel, which is where I will be uploading live comms. I know most of you are here for reviews, so if you are interested in more laid back gameplay, then feel free to subscribe. Okay, starting as always with the engine and performance, and the T114 is powered by an engine producing 160 horsepower. When combined with the vehicle's weight of a measly 9 tons, the tank has a fairly decent power to weight ratio of 17.8 horsepower per ton. For a battery rating 6.7 vehicle, this is actually pretty good, especially for a tank destroyer, and it gives the vehicle the feel and acceleration of a light tank, really allowing you to nip around the battlefield. Moving on to the transmission, and just like the excellent acceleration, you have an equally good top speed of 57km per hour, as well as a workable 12km per hour reverse speed. These top speeds, in combination with the high power to weight ratio, gives you very snappy acceleration in either direction, giving the tank an incredibly mobile feeling. While this vehicle doesn't have neutral steering, its relatively short length allows it to turn very rapidly at slow speed, practically giving you the same slow speed acceleration as neutral steering main battle tanks. Overall, the speed acceleration and decent hull traverse makes the T114 feel far more like a light tank than a traditional American tank destroyer. Your speed and relatively small size really does allow you to act as a team scout, which is ideal as a T114 gets a scouting ability, essentially giving you the choice between playing the vehicle as an aggressive tank destroyer or an agile sneaky scout. Moving on to the arm and survivability, and the T114 only has two crew members, with one in the turret and a driver in the hull. This layout means that if a single crew member is knocked out, the vehicle will be instantly destroyed, giving this tank an insanely low survivability score, even when compared to contemporary light tanks. Thankfully however, your aforementioned small size and high speed should come in handy to counter this. Being an American light tank built in the early 60s, designers naturally went with using aluminium for construction. While very light compared to steel, it offers far less protection. This choice was mainly made for logistical reasons. It's far easier to transport a light vehicle around a war zone, but we don't have that issue in War Thunder, so let's take a look at the arm performance itself and just see how little protection we have. Being a light tank built out of aluminium, testing the armour of this vehicle against high caliber cannons is a little bit pointless, so we're going to be using the HVAT bullets fired by the Kugel bullets, a common German anti-everything vehicle also found at battery rating 6.7. Starting as always with the lower frontal plate, and the T-14 offers between 40 and 30mm of protection, an easy penetration for all large caliber machine guns. The upper plate however is relatively well angled, with the first part providing 140mm of armour 
and the more angled upper section providing a maximum of 160mm of armour protection. It's important to note the relatively flat part of armour near the driver's hatch. Protection here again drops down to around 31mm of armour, and it's the same situation for the turret, again providing around 30-40mm to of armour. If we turn the camera to the side of the vehicle, we can see that as you'd expect, the armour is very light, providing only around 16mm of armour, but if we move up to the turret, it gives us a measly 22mm of armour. And finally, both the rear of the turret and hull provide less than 20mm of protection. Overall, both the armour and survivability of this tank is terrible. Only one round needs to penetrate and kill only one member of the crew for the tank to be instantly destroyed, leading to some very annoying deaths. As the tank has such thin armour all around, you are incredibly vulnerable to high explosive artillery shells as well as aircraft drop bombs and rockets. As I said earlier, it's best to use your speed and small stature to stay hidden in a sneaky but deadly location. Moving on to the weapons and ammunition, and as you can see the T114 is armed with a 106mm M40A1C recoilless rifle, essentially the same weapons as found on the Italian R3 and Fiat 6614. However, this weapon system is a little bit different as we'll see later on. Being a recoilless rifle, it vents gas at both the breech and the muzzle, meaning the projectile has a relatively low muzzle velocity, making it hard to consistently aim at long ranges. The gun itself has 8 degrees of both elevation and depression, which suits the sneaky light tank playstyle. You can carry a maximum of 26 rounds of ammunition, with 3 of those rounds being classed as first stage ammunition, which when combined with the one round in the chamber, gives you 4 rapid fire shots. While the T114 doesn't have an auto loader, it works kind of like one. Your first 3 reloads are incredibly quick, and all subsequent reloads take much longer as the rounds have to be replenished. Speaking of reloads, if we take a look at the reloading skill under the loader section, we can see that the first stage ammunition has a base reload speed of 3.25 seconds, and with an ace crew, that drops down to 2.5 seconds. This is obviously much faster than most tanks at battery rating 6.7, allowing you to pump 3 rounds into an enemy before retreating to reload. The downside of this however, is when you expend your first stage ammunition, your reload increases up to 12 seconds. Because of this, I'd never recommend emptying your first stage ammunition. Moving on to the targeting skill under the gunner section, and we can see that you have a base turret rotation speed of 14 degrees per second, which rises to 20 degrees per second with an ace crew. This is quite low for a quasi light tank, and is more like the traditional slow turning American tank destroyer turrets. This is an issue, as your hull traverse is far higher than the turret traverse. It doesn't allow you to rapidly swing onto a target, meaning in some situations you aren't able to be as aggressive as you'd like. Next we move on to the modifications, and I want to point out that this tank doesn't get access to any sort of range finding equipment. This makes aiming a relatively low muzzle velocity weapon rather hard. This issue is compounded by the fact that this tank only has a constant 5x magnification, lacking that long range optical zoom you'd ideally want, although the field of view in the gunner sight is actually pretty good. Moving on to the ammunition, and you only have one choice. This is the M344A1 high explosive anti-tank round. It has a muzzle velocity of only 502 meters per second, half the muzzle velocity of the Tiger II's main gun. Luckily, being a heat round, its penetration isn't affected by the round's ballistics, giving you 433 moments of flat penetration at all ranges. And against armor angled at 60 degrees, it still manages a compositive 216mm of armor penetration. This round is very good in terms of penetration, even the latter statistic is impressive. The main issue with this round, however, is its destructive capabilities. As a round only contains 1.65kg of TNT filler, it has a relatively poor post penetration damage effect, essentially acting like an APDS round. While this is a very simplistic comparison, you will have to aim for crew members and ammunition for reliable one-shot kills against opponents, just the same as APDS shells. Firing at the centre of mass an opponent is unlikely to kill them in one shot. My advice is to always disable the barrel or gunner first, and then use your fast reload to whittle down the rest of the crew. Just be careful of commanders, as most tanks have commander controlled heavy machine guns, which may be able to penetrate your armour. The tank also has a range firing 50 caliber machine gun, but this only has around 10 rounds in its magazine, making it practically useless. Overall, the firepower of the T114 is best used as a shotgun at close range. Its low muzzle velocity rather limits the tank's ability to sit at the back of a battle, and you are best using this little tank's speed and mobility to push forward in the early game, and let enemies come to you. If you don't feel like you can take these enemies out, simply spot them for your team, and let your teammates do the killing. While the rounds this tank fires are unquestionably powerful, they do require a little bit of vehicle knowledge to work well. To conclude, the T114 is a very effective scout tank. It's small, powerful, and above all else, highly mobile, allowing you to quickly arrive at an ambush position and decimate anyone that pushes you. 
The tank clearly has downsides. It has no armour and will probably die if it went over a speed bump too fast. Another massive downside is the cost. At 8,020 Golden Eagles, it is a very large investment, even for a premium. There are a wealth of competitive American premiums such as the T29 and M46 Tiger, both of which are significantly cheaper, have similar if not better firepower and are much more beginner friendly, mainly due to having traditional steel armour. Overall, I really like this little tank. I bought it years ago and use it as my main scout in the American tech tree, but for a new player, investing in one of the more beginner friendly premiums is probably a better choice. The T29 and M46 are at a similar battle rating, but are located in the 4th rank, as opposed to the T114's 5th rank. This does mean you can easily grind out rank 6 American vehicles in a battle rating 6.7 vehicle. However, personally, I recommend players to purchase the M46 Tiger. It's fast, has good firepower, and is significantly cheaper. If you are dead set on getting a rank 5 premium, however, I'd recommend the Magak 3 pack. While being at bat rating 7.7 .7 instead of 6.7, .7, I think it's better value for money and you also get some Golden Eagles and premium time with it. In general, I'd only really recommend players picking up the T114 if it is on sale, at around 35-50% to off. It's important to remember that this is just my opinion. What do you guys think of this American tin can on tracks? If you have any questions, criticism, positive or negative, or would even like to request a review, then please feel free to leave a comment below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if I did my job correctly, hopefully you should have learned something new about this vehicle. If you do enjoy these sorts of videos, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. But more importantly lads, I hope you have a great day, and thank you very much for watching.